Um, I'm Zania. I've been working at SPNN for about um, three years now, three or four years, like three years officially. And then I think with everything else, I've been like doing programming there or working with another program that was there. So I've been around SPNN for a while. Um, and yeah, so I'm just excited to let people know about this program. This is my second year doing it or facilitating it. Uh, the years prior, it was ran by Jua, who was amazing and is still doing amazing work in the Twin Cities, amazing documentary work. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen. Hello. And uh, once again, um, the overview, we're going to do a little bit about SPNN, and then we'll go directly into um, learning about the program. Can everybody see my screen? Give me a thumbs up. I can see some faces. Okay, beautiful. Um, cool. Let's see if this will work for me. Cool. So St. Paul Neighborhood Network, um, the mission that we have is the stories we see in mass media impact the beliefs, ideas, and values that shape the way our world operates. Our mission is to empower people to use media and communications to make better lives, use authentic voice, and build common understanding. Um, SPNN is technically, how I would consider it, is a media access center where there is programming for folks to learn about cameras, um, learn about editing, learn about studio usage and public access programs. We also do some different types of learning opportunities in the community, as well as having opportunities like this, New Angle Fellows and DocU for people to come in and kind of work on their craft and kind of build more skills um, at every stage in development and provide platforms for those pieces to be shown. Um, the funders for this program are the Jerome Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, yeah. And so the outline for today, we'll go over the program overview, eligibility, um, requirements, application, and questions at the end. And also if there are questions that come up as I'm talking, feel free to like type them or like raise your hand or you can like unmute and just say, I have a question. Um, so for the program overview, New Angle Fellows is a seven month fellowship that supports underrepresented and emerging documentary filmmakers. The cohort of six members will get the opportunity to learn skills and knowledge from more advanced filmmakers and gain support from one another. Fellows will receive $3,500 stipend to support them in producing their documentary. Um, yes. So a little side notes, uh, the session. Um, so a part the, the large portion of New Angle Fellows is that it's a cohort structure, which means we spend a lot of time being in group with one another. So twice a month, from November to May on a Wednesday evening, we will meet at SPNN or another identified location um, to go through some lessons, whether that be around pitching, making pitch decks, story development, story construction for documentary, reviews, having visiting artists, things like that come in. Um, in the past, it's been really beneficial for people to be working on something in a group and like meeting other people that are also working um, and doing similar things to you. Um, so that's always been really exciting. I was a doc, I was in a New Angle Fellows in 2019. And that was one of the main like benefits was like growing with this group of people and like having those connections forever. And also just seeing what it looks like to be a filmmaker in Minneapolis or in St. Paul. And like, cause it can feel um, insular and very isolated at times, but there are other people doing very similar work. Um, so yeah, that's for the sessions. Um, and then the participants will receive $3,500 and that'll be distributed in three chunks. Um, this is something that I think will be helpful with getting people kind of to hold themselves accountable for work. I'm also a practicing artist in the cities and um, quite a few funders do payment in chunks. The purpose for this uh, distribution method is that there are milestones that will be determined between myself as the program facilitator and the and, and, and individual participants on kind of where they think good milestones are for them to meet so that I can hold them accountable, they can hold themselves accountable. Um, it's not meant to be like, a, I'm holding your money until you do what I want you to do. It's more so just an accountability thing to help you take full advantage of the program. Um, in past years, a lot of, <laughs> it happens a lot, it happened to me as well. Um, 
people, life happens and things kind of get pushed back until like the very end. And it's hard to take advantage of like review sessions and like take full advantage of visiting artists if you're not keeping up with your project and kind of progressing. Um, so the intention is to help accountability on both ends. Um, so that's around the stipends. Eligibility. As long as, uh, if you are a resident in the Twin Cities metro area um, and for the duration of the fellowship, you are a member of a marginalized or underrepresented community, BIPOC, LGBTQ, women or non-binary, disabled, et cetera. Um, you are 18 years or older and not enrolled in higher education college um, from the fall of 2020 to 2023 in the spring. Um, and then that you are also an emerging filmmaker. That also is a little bit of a loose definition. And then, so I kind of broke down what emerging curator can mean. And we also have space for you to explain that in your application and it's very individualized. Um, so an artist who have an ongoing commitment to working in the media, to working in the in media production rather than engaging in it as a hobby, pastime or occasional pursuit. Artists who at the time of application have generated, completed and publicly presented published documentary work. Artists who, whose primary goal is to generate new documentaries as opposed to remounting or reinterpreting existing work. Artists who are in the early stages of their creative development, artists who have a focused direction and, and goals, even while still developing their artistic voice. Artists who have yet to be substantially celebrated within their field, the media, the media funding circles, or that or the public at large. Um, so with that being said, it's kind of individualized and this section of the application gives you time to explain why you feel you're emerging and however that's defined for you personally. Um, yeah, and I think there are more technical definitions amongst different funders. Uh, I think like McKnight and things like that have more um, specific definitions. But once again, like a lot of other funders are starting to do now, leaving more room for people to self-identify and declare how what stage they think they're in. So all that being said, you get to tell us what stage you think you're at. Um, requirements, uh, attend monthly sessions. So those were the two Wednesday evenings a month I was referring to. Um, and those will happen all the way from November to May. And then in June, the screening will happen. Um, it will also be one-on-one -on -one check ins and those will probably be used to check in on those benchmarks individually um, and any other like assistance that you need and those one-on-one -on -one check ins can be curated to be uh, to serve whatever support that you're looking for at whatever stage in the process you're at. Um, engage with other fellows in the cohort to support one another. We don't force people to work on each other's pieces, but oftentimes it winds up happening. People collaborate because often uh, we, we encourage people to work in teams or to start building out teams because it is very hard to film, interview, <laughs> do everything on set, set up and do the whole thing up by yourself. And so we kind of encourage you to reach out to other folks in the film, in the film world that are close to you and also in your cohort. Um, complete a three to 10 minute work in progress or a completed documentary to show at, the, um, at a public screening in June. So in the past years, there have been requirements that a completed documentary be done. A lot of people come in wanting to do feature, feature length um, that's not uh, frowned upon or, or like not an option. However, we are aware that seven months isn't really a long time to complete a feature length piece. So we do accept um, shorts and we also encourage people to think about this program as kind of a next step or a transition period. So if you are someone who is looking to get funding or more funding for a specific project, using this time to build a sample, um, a really good sample that you can submit to other things for funders or submit to film festivals or different film labs, um, and, and it can count in that way as well. So um, it's individualized what kind of finished product you want to walk away with, and we can help assist you with that. And then also SPNN as an access channel, we have channels that we can put um, media that has been made by cohorts as well as members. Um, so at the end of it, cause certain film festivals have requirements of like, um, you can only submit to this film festival if it's never been shown before or it's never had an official screening. So when we do our screening, we call it a work in progress screening so that it doesn't um, interfere with any submissions to film festivals but we ultimately we would love to host it on um, 
our channels. So application questions. I pulled out some of the ones, there are more like specific demographic questions and some of those uh, more common questions like address, email, like all those types of things, names, pronouns, um, and, and then other gen general demographic questions. But the ones I pulled out to talk about today are just uh, ones that are more narrative. So as I'm reading them off, if you have any questions, feel free to just interject. So um, who are you as a filmmaker or media artist? Um, why do you do this work? What is your experience with video slash film production? Where are you now in your media career? What are your long-term goals for media and career? Please list any uh, recognition you've received for your work, if any. Please share with us a list of the media pieces you have produced um, and include the title, year completed, your specific role and where you presented slash published it. And then how would a documentary fellowship benefit you? What phase are you in, what phase are you in for your film? Please describe the documentary you would like to work on in the New England Fellows. What relationship do you already have to the people or the subjects that you're interested in following? And what would you spend your $3,500 stipend on? Um, so those are the more narrative-based questions that kind of want you to explain and talk through um, your plans. I will say in the past, having a project start from solely ideation has been a little difficult to see through if people haven't already kind of been chipping away at it or have some some sort of plan. Um, so we really do encourage people to come in with kind of an idea that they believe they can follow through on and have connections with already because seven months is not a very long time um, for a brand new idea with people that you're already not in relationship with. Sometimes it can be a little challenging. And on a producing side, People take a long time to contact you and follow back and to, and to develop those relationships. So we do kind of um, want to encourage people to have an idea that they feel connected to and have the capacity to do well. Um, so yeah, those are kind of, that's the rough outline of the program. Um, I would love any questions anybody has or just statements. I have a question. Um, if you could go back to the slide of um, prerequisites. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't this one. Um, yeah, I just wanted uh, to know how would you, like what is this question really getting at in terms of the um, have, form, have not been recognized by the circle? Um, what does recognition look like and like what is really at, at the heart of that question? For sure, thank you for that. Um, so in terms of recognition, thinking about like any grants you've received for doing film work, any places that you've screened film work or any projects that you were a part of that have been screened in places. Um, it doesn't necessarily, I think the, the, con the idea is to show that you've been doing this work and that it's been uh, consistent and that um, it's not kind of a hobby that you do in between other things and it kind of is your primary interest. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea around the recognition portion. So just to show that you've been doing the work that you said you're interested in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Hi, I, um, I have a question in regards to, um, I have done uh, work on a documentary at SPN, uh, I think it was 2014. Does that eliminate me from being in this project? Um, I'm so, you put out on part of it, but you said you worked on a documentary that was filmed at SPN in 2014? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Okay. Um, no, you're not disqualified at all. You can still apply and you can probably also use that as a reference to some of the work that you've done. Okay, thank you. Hi, I have a question. Yeah. See, my question is, I think you are asking the people to come in and have a idea and make a documentary three to five, seven minutes. But to make a documentary requires a learning also for some people because if I do not know anything about 
filming uh, without learning i can't make it yeah so for um for new angle fellows is geared towards we say more advanced filmmakers we do have programs at spnn that teach the basics of camera operation video editing um, and we have some other opportunities for that the a lot of the program support for this documentary is more so about um finding a community, bringing in artists that can help with like story construction and kind of build upon um, some basic film skills that have already been had because we don't really dedicate a lot of instruction time to oh, I see. editing and camera usage. So yeah, but I would strongly encourage you, encourage anybody who is interested and doesn't have any experience yet to apply to the Docu Fellowship or our Spotlight Shorts that kind of have inter um, people work on those that have uh, varying levels of experience and kind of work in teams in that way too. I have an additional question. Yes. I, I wanted to find out, would it be all right if I actually use software that, that I actually are already working on? Like say for instance, um, I'm very familiar with working with um, Final Cut 10 and I have that. Would I be able to use that on my own and then for submit? Yeah, for sure. Um, everybody in this, uh, especially for this one, since we don't, there will be some instruction time, I think, geared towards like editing as a skill set versus like editing on specific software. Um, and so everybody's open to using whatever they feel comfortable with, whether that's DaVinci, Final Cut, Movie, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you feel comfortable on. Um, I will say SPN staff as a whole has more, has more resources and experience with Adobe Premiere than anything. Yes but it's not impossible for us to also offer support in that area. I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Any other questions? So uh, if nobody's asking a question, then I'm curious mm -hmm. that when you started this program, what was your skill level at that time? Yeah, um, so when I started facilitating last year, last year was my first year. Um, I had been doing film for about six years in total, um, mostly client work, mostly on the production side, less on the creative side. Um, in, my, in my own personal artistic practice, I've done more creative pieces, but when I had done the program, when I went through the program in 2019, that was my first time working through a documentary or idea of my own. Um, and so since then, I've taught a couple other variations of film, film classes and things like that. So I would say creatively, I have more experience in commercial and nonprofit video work than I would strictly documentary work. Um, but yeah. So then what was the change in your skill level when you attained that program from the early what you had already? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me coming into the program in 2019 when I had when I when I was a fellow, the biggest thing was I didn't have ever have time that I felt was designated for creating my own project because I had came out of college and went directly into the field. And so it was a lot of like client work and commercial work. So I never had designated time or structured time to really work on my own idea. And the fellowship really provided that and it provided support and some financial support to even take off work or dedicate more time to, to, to completing my own ideas. So what is your dream? What do you want to become or want to do? Um, well, <laughs> I love teaching. Um, I love teaching. I love helping people find how they best communicate and best, uh, best work through their own artistic practice. So as a facilitator, that is kind of my main intention. Um, I will say a lot of the people who come through the program, I am technically, I'm, I'm peers with, not even technically, I'm peers with, and I often see in my personal life and like out in the field and doing amazing work. And so I think of my role as to facilitate the space that was offered up to me as well. So it's not a space where I come in thinking that like, I know everything and I'm here to teach everybody everything. Um, I think it's a co the cohort structure I love because it allows people to learn from each other 
bring their own experiences to the space to make it better and also bringing in the visiting artists who are uh, more experienced in their field specifically to also offer up their expertise. So it is a, an idea of communal learning. So anybody who's asking any question, please interrupt us so that. <laughs> I, have a, okay. I have a question, right. too, okay. but I've been asking questions, so I don't know if somebody can take up. Yes, go. Um, so yeah, the okay. So I guess this is uh, perhaps more individual for for myself, but like mm -hmm. as someone who has gone through DocU and Spotlight series, um, like New Angle Fellows just feels like the path line, the path pathway that I've been following. But I haven't really gotten the chance to do documentary work outside of those spaces. Um, I work on other production. Um, sets and stuff but uh i think that's kind of like that that difficulty of being an emerging filmmaker is that the skill my skills technical skills might not be up to par with what's needed for professional uh, and commercial production but also i have not received any grants or supports to be able to do this work um, more committedly outside of like opportunities that are paid even if in small stipends um i don't know if i'm sure what that, if i'm coming across with that but so it's just kind of like a frustrating situation and i just want to be able to um, if you have any feedback or advice on how can i position myself and demonstrate ongoing commitment to uh, this pathway even as opportunities are not necessarily um like you know being presented yeah for sure um and just that they're out there people who have done spotlight shorts and doc you are definitely encouraged to apply because it is kind of a um, through line that we created at SPNN to help people at every stage. So that does uh, definitely help and show commitment to past works and things like that. One second. Okay. Okay. No sneezing happened. Um, so it does show a commitment in that way. Um, I would say documentary film and film work in general in the cities, a lot of people get their foot in the door by doing commercial work and freelance work. Um, and you kind of build up the technical skills in that way. Um, and I think creativity is something that does, isn't contained to a job or a specific area. So it's like, while building up those skills, it gives you the confidence to be like, oh, I'm going to make this short piece that's of my own. Or I'm going to start building up a demo reel that then allows me to apply for things that shows that this is the caliber of work I can do. Or this is the kind of work I've been doing. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where oftentimes in grant opportunities, finding a way to articulate that you've been in the field, but just on the opposite side of the track in terms of creativity and intention and wanting to, and wanting to pivot and have more access to, um, the, the creative funding and more, uh, and more opportunities like that. So I think that's also something I, even for myself personally in grants, if I'm ever trying to do something that, or apply for something that I, have, I don't feel like I've done technically, um, just articulating that this is what you have been doing. This is how you feel it supports the work that you're trying to do. Can I just um, quickly weigh in as yeah. well? Um, this is yeah, Bonnie, would... everyone. Bonnie works at SPNN and she is, what's your technical role, Bonnie? What's my what's my what my title? I'm yeah. associate director. But there and, you go. Bonnie's important, y'all. She has more answers than I do for a lot of things. Just only because I've been around for a very long time. <laughs> That's the deal. Mm -hmm. um, you have way more skills than I have yeah. in so many areas. Um, but so uh, yeah, I just wanted to weigh in like a lot of the I think around the question that you were asking as well. It's more about wanting. To, the the um, recognition in the field is more about making sure you aren't past emerging versus that you are not yet emerging. So I think you are in a space where I would encourage you to apply. So um, if that helps you answer that part of that question, like we uh, Zinio will I say we Zinio will. <laughs> Um, help walk you through doing applications for some different grants and that's a part of this process and this program so we don't we don't expect that you will have gotten many grants up to this point so um, 
and the technical skills that you are building as you're helping out on um, other folks's productions and stuff, that's great. And then you'll be able to bring those into learning more about your own process of storytelling as Dania was alluding to earlier. So I just wanted to clarify that. I, I have another question. Uh, and again, uh, the minimum and the maximum amount of time for this um, production piece. Okay. For the, for uh, yeah, the minimum is three minutes of a sample or a trailer or a teaser um, or, or, or whatever is defined as what's best for you to move to like for the next step or a completed piece. Um, so there is no real maximum. Um, there are people who have pitched to do series um, who want to use this to start a docu-series. And so for them, they provide the first 10 minutes of the first episode. Like that's the part that's completed. Um, so it is, it's, it's very flexible. Okay. But the minimum is three, three minutes. See, you're talking of minimum three minutes. That means particularly a scene or two or three scenes. And writing and making one scene, which is really effective, which cause emotional and thoughtful provoking scenes is very, very difficult. You have to learn first, what are the emotions, how to create them by telling an action. And I tell you, I have been learning this whole thing for last five years and I want to make a feature film. And I find it writing a simple scene, three minutes is very, very difficult. I would agree. I mean, a lot of people think that we are watching the movie and just we can understand and uh, we enjoy. But boy, creating a scene is so hard. You have to understand a very high level to create something beautifully. I'm not talking normal things and I mean, just for fun, but to produce a thought and emotion by a scene which tells something about human being is very hard. Very true. Thank you for that. Oh, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, so my idea, I haven't shot anything yet. For So to have the three minute, you need, you said you have, you need a three minute minimum of like uh, uh, a teaser? Yeah, for the final product after the seven oh, months, after seven months. Oh, mm -hmm. for the final product. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah. So yeah, to come into the program with your idea is not required that you've shot anything. What is the difference between feature film and documentary? Like you mean narrative, narrative wise? Yeah, a feature film, which we see a movie and mm -hmm. documentary. What is the basic difference between the two? I think, I think what you're asking is like documentary is something that is technically unscripted and feature film or a narrative film is something that is scripted and somebody has like taken a lot of time to write the scripts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions? I, I think documentary is easier to make than a feature film. I don't know about that. I don't know about that neither. <laughs> it's just as difficult. Both, both are uh, different creatures, but the same amount of uh, uh, technical difficulties, as well as, like as you say, the scripted and non-scripted. Even though something's not scripted, it's still very difficult because it has to be concisive. And um, with that being concise, it has to be congruent. So there's a lot of factors that still. Uh, be, uh, beginning, middle, and end, and because of today, the way people look at media, concentration, uh, people about three to four minutes is about the time that people uh, actually are, you can hold their attention. So again, you can do longer things, but three to four minutes, beginning, middle, and end, the next three or four minutes, beginning, middle, and end. You have to keep telling small stories in short amount of times. But um, what I was trying to get at was um, people's concentration span is very short. So it is it is possible to do things in small amount of times, but it's the way it's constructed. Sure. Sure. Um, thank you for that. Uh, are there any 
other questions also i will um i can put, i'll put my email in the chat if you have any uh, questions about your application um or anything like that please feel free to reach out the deadline is on the third um just for reference um, I think that's my email. Yeah, that's my email. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you have any, have any like any personal questions, feel free to like just reach out and uh, or individualize questions about your project or anything like that. Um, and also, Bonnie's a great resource as well. Um, but thank you all for coming out. And this will be available. I'm gonna post this on the website. So if you know anybody who missed the info session. Um, please feel free to let them know that they can email me as well. And this video will be available on the main page on SPNN.